Have you ever thought where the SpongeBob characters sit on a morality chart from good to pure evil? No, you haven't, neither have I. But today we're gonna find out who is the best SpongeBob character in terms of straight up morality and who's the evilest? Let's find out. There's been a video made, but we can see if we agree with them or not. Who is the nicest and who's the naughtiest? Mr. Krabs. Oh God. For the most good character. I mean, it's obviously gonna be SpongeBob, right? to go to Mermaid Man. What? <laughs> Mermaid Man? Okay, just because he's a superhero, that doesn't mean he came good, okay? Have you seen the boys? You know Homelander, he's basically the Mermaid Man of the, the, the real world and Truly he's evil. a character who has a real sense of justice. Well, maybe more so before he went senile. Away. But he's still. I mean, a I guess he's a good guy. He's he's a nice person. I, Although he's not he he's not evil, is he? Of much now, given his age and mental state, he has a passion for good and fighting crime. Oh my God, he was so yoked. And frankly, a long Jesus. history of being a superhero since his younger days. I love the designs of these characters because they are super 1950s, like magazine comic books, down to a T. Look at Mermaid Man or Barnacle Boy's face. That is quintessential 1950s comics. You can't take so that cool. away from him. And even in his old age, he's still out there doing what he can to make the world a better place. As he's a good lad. I is. Mermaid Maybe they're Man, right. You've earned your spot in the superhero Hall of Fame. We salute he's, you. Next, he's fighting for justice until the end. Princess Mindy, who was featured in the first SpongeBob movie. Her love of all underwater creatures means that she's one of the most caring and good characters in the SpongeBob universe. Yeah, true, but she also revealed the bald head of her father. And revealing the bald spot of a possibly insecure middle-aged man like that. That is an act of pure diabolicy. Diabol di diabolic diabolically. Look That's at evil. This little guy. Voiced by Scarlett Johansson, she's the What? She is? I did not know that. That's of King Neptune and the voice okay. of reason in the castle. She shows far more compassion towards her subjects than her father and uses her mermaid magic to help the sea creatures get over their fears. With my mermaid magic. Of course, she's I think that's not like a QAnon conspiracy theory. We find magic. In the movie, and this is all a ruse. But it's a lie with positive intentions, so we really can't hold it against her. For our mm, a lie with positive intentions. Yeah, sure, we'll let that one slide. All right, who's next? I'm gonna guess the really good characters. I think Patrick is a genuinely good character. For so maybe Patrick. Pick, we have Gary the Snail. Dude, Gary's an ass. He's the sea version of a cat, and they're assholes. Gary has helped out all across Bikini Bottom, having taken on the role of a DJ, a bouncer, a cashier at SpongeBob's restaurant and a waiter at the Krusty Krab. That's super helpful for a pet. Meow. He's the ever loyal friend to SpongeBob and he's even an animal rights advocate. The truth is, we don't really have anything bad to say about the little guy. Although I suppose he is he's a, a bit, bit of an a asshole. Next up is Sandy Cheeks. Is Sandy Cheeks morally good? I, I suppose so. She does enjoy fighting, but it's mostly just for sport against people that consent to it. Has Sandy Cheeks ever done anything really bad? Uh, apart from assault her friends, Pinhead Larry, and As an air Dirty breather, Dan. She's forced to live in an underwater dome and to wear a helmet whenever she- And also basically almost suffocated SpongeBob to death in the episode where he's like, I don't need water, I don't need water. Her as her, a friend of SpongeBob should have realized that he was slowly dying and solve the situation, but town. no, apparently not. She's by far one of the most level-headed and caring characters in the show and probably the most loyal of all of SpongeBob's friends. But it's worth noting that nah, there's Sandy's also great. a darker I can't even. side to Sandy. She's a proud Texan, and anyone who says ill about the state will feel her wrath. She had no idea. Yeah, no, that's true. That is true. I, I'm, I'm really trying to play devil's advocate right now and give reasons as to why they're good or like bad, but Sandy is straight up just like good. She has a clean sheet. That was the first time that we met, so she had absolutely no idea. I, you know, I can't and think of a reason a to not like she Sandy. She has a tendency to set up situations to see how others will react, sometimes bordering on unethical. Just putting the finishing touches on my new invention. One time she fed an experiment to the patrons of the Krusty Krab with unfortunate results. She also knows how to talk SpongeBob into doing things that he's not so keen on. You have to be- 
Why does she have boobs? Well, because Amber, because boobs are hot. You can't have a TV show without big old bazonga zongas, big old hunka balabaloos. Willing to do me? anything. Truthfully, if Sandy represented a sin, it would be pride. But she's also incredibly well intentioned, honorable, and loyal to her friends. She's the one you would go to if you needed help. In addition to being there True. for her friends, Sandy is the Game Boy Luke of SpongeBob SquarePants. She's also incredibly forgiving when it comes to SpongeBob and Patrick's shenanigans. Or, you know, unless she's hibernating. <laughs> now we move on to the star of the show, SpongeBob SquarePants. I mean, SpongeBob has done. Actually, no, I think SpongeBob pretty straight up. He has like a childlike mind, so he hasn't done really anything super bad. This joyful, upbeat, and positive sea sponge is, in fact, a bit self obsessed and reckless. He's caring, and his intentions are almost always good, but his consequent actions don't always necessarily manifest in that way. His behavior, along with Patrick's, is a constant annoyance for Squidward, and he gets Mrs. Puff arrested on numerous occasions <laughs> because of his lack of concentration when driving. To be fair, the one thing that SpongeBob has done the worst is he has failed his driving test upwards of like 400 times. I feel like if you fail it that many times, you should just take yourself off the road. You are clearly not built for driving. It's okay. You can live without driving. It's fine. It is a morally bad action to continue to try and drive when you are clearly not made for it whatsoever. He tends to He's make not a, a kid because he works in a fast food restaurant and he is learning to drive so he can't be that young and he owns his own home by the way and is separate and lives separate from his parents so he has to be at least like what 18 at least 18 right problems like when he lost his name tag and he's so overconfident that it grates on everybody i lost my name tag with all that said though he is kind-hearted and does his best to help out those around him He's someone who finds joy wherever he goes and so desperately wants to share that positivity, even with those who don't want it. Now, I think the most evil character is going to be Mr. Krabs. Probably easily saying like, oh, it's going to be Plankton. I don't think Plankton's the most evil character. I think a Plankton is a downtrodden on small business owner that is trying his absolute best to get by with what he has. He needs to figure out a way to expand and innovate on his business. And he's trying to steal from other businesses in order to do that, which obviously isn't fantastic, but still isn't the worst character in the show. The worst character is Mr. Krabs. Uh, throughout the series, he has That's what I'm gonna arrested say. arrested seven times, mainly for theft and being a public nuisance. And even Santa called him a menace in spite of his good nature, which kind of summarizes him perfectly. None of this negativity is intentional though. SpongeBob doesn't have a bad bone in his body. Thanks for the lies, Mr. Fairy Tale. Well, as a sponge, he doesn't really have any bones, but he just simply doesn't have the self-awareness to know when he's doing harm. His treatment of Squidward is usually born from wanting to make him happy. And in a lot of ways, he represents a hedonistic pursuit of fun. Despite- I think Squidward is more neutral as well. At the end, when it really comes down to it, he can be very kind-hearted and he just kind of hides his true emotions and feelings behind a facade of stoicism and uh, non-caring about the people around him. But, you know, he's but had his moments of emotional him. The residents of outburst. Bikini Bottom find his antics annoying, so much so that in the episode Gone, they organize a national No SpongeBob Day that even Patrick takes part in. A whole oh my day gosh. dedicated to getting away from you. His games Aww, that's also awful. have a habit of going way too far, such as when he tricked a lifeguard into thinking that he was dying. Also, this list is immediately wrong because clearly the most morally good character in SpongeBob SquarePants is Bubble Buddy. The fact that they didn't even mention Bubble Buddy at the start is disgusting or to me. Or when he sabotaged Squidward so he could become the employee of the month. You can't win that award if you don't get up for work. Or when he That's made fun of up. Sandy for not being able to do everything that the underwater creatures could. There's definitely a small villainous side. Oh, also they killed a guy. <laughs> yeah, remember when they fucking killed the dude? To our favorite sponge. He helped Mr. Krabs poison a health inspector, tortured Patrick on a number of occasions, and once Bubble Bunny did nothing wrong. Town and kept them in a jar. He may be fun. He didn't die. Yeah, but like they thought he did. And they were like, ah, oh, dude, instead of reporting it to the correct authorities, they tried to dispose of the body to protect themselves. Nope. That's pretty bad. Exciting and the star of the show, but SpongeBob certainly isn't a saint. 
He should still be your first port of call in Bikini Bottom though. He means well, and he'll definitely show you a good time. We talked about Mermaid Man, so we can't forget about Barnacle Boy. Yes, he's yeah, Barnacle a Boy is kind of neutral to be too. honest. Well, a sidekick anyway. But Barnacle Boy seems to have a much more cranky and negative attitude, and we can't forget that at one point he even jumps ship to the evil side. Granted, this he is did in turn into a villain. To years of Mermaid Man treating him as a child, but he quickly patches things up and returns to the side of righteousness as Barnacle Man. So we can't dock him too many points. I knew this was a bad idea. Next up is Pearl Krabs. Barnacle Boy just seems to be a character that's more just bored. He's bored of the rigmarole. He's seen it all and he's tired of being second fiddle to Mermaid Man, which to be fair, I totally understand that. I, I get that. I, I understand why people would feel that way. Mr. Krabs' daughter, and also probably the biggest character on the list. That's fat shaming. Because she's a whale. Okay, well still, that's not very nice. That's body shaming. She's huh, yet to take on any of the questionable traits of her father, Mr. Krabs, and works as an assistant at a store in the Bikini Bottom Mall. Pearl I didn't know is that. well-meaning and optimistic, but she's still a child, so can get overdramatic and extremely emotional in an instant. She uses her- can I also say that SpongeBob went to the school dance with her once, which is weird, because he's like, he's what, like, he has to be at least in his early 20s. If a man in his early 20s is going with like a 16-year-old girl to the high school dance, then that's that's a problem. And was also encouraged to by Mr. Krabs, the father in this situation. What the fuck is going her on? Cleverness to manipulate her father, who, when he normally would be angry at her overspending, has no choice but to give in to her demands. The biggest problem with Pearl is that she seems to think that the world revolves around her. And of course she does! She's a 16-year-old girl with blonde hair! And that she routinely throws fits whenever she doesn't get her way. Certainly a selfish character at times. Next up, we're throwing in Larry the Lobster, which might Larry's be a, a cool guy, given the fact that he was an early source of SpongeBob's insecurity. All due to his muscles. Even your Damn. cramps have cramps. But such a hunk. God, he's such a dreamboat. Admit that Larry's personality is very positive and happy. That said, he's revealed to be a bit cowardly in the episode A Life in a Day, and he also treated his own parents with disrespect when he removed them from the beach for being unsightly. Okay, that's just so fucking horrible. Oh my god, you never guys mind. Are way dick. too old and unsightly for my beach. Although he did do this in his usual polite manner. Larry suffers from much of the same pride that Sandy suffers from. Larry the Lobster is a deeply insecure individual, resulting to spamming the gym over and over again to try and get strength buffs, but understandably, it never quite fixes the, the mental debuff that he has from his insecurity. But darn it, he's just so cool and likable. Okay, on to Mrs. Puff. SpongeBob's boating school. Mrs. Instructor. Puff is While misunderstood. We see her as the ever patient teacher to SpongeBob's mayhem, Mrs. Puff has a dark history, one full of mischief and criminal acts, becoming a full time bank robber when her first boating school failed. She's been to jail more often than any other characters in the show. Mrs. Puff is a victim of the system. Unfortunately, her business failed, and in order to come back from that, she was forced to uh, do criminal crimes because the, the bikini bottom would not support but her. in her defense, it's often because of SpongeBob. The Pufferfish begins as an eternally patient character, but grows more and more angry and annoyed as the series progresses. Often seen avoiding responsibility Responsibilities and even seeking solace in prison time to avoid the stresses of the outside world. No more SpongeBob, no more road rage, no more SpongeBob. But we can't overlook her past as a bank robber. She still keeps her mask handy in case things take a turn for the worse again. While Patrick Star is off Patrick Star is kind of a dick. I just remember that one episode of, with the chocolate bar. That, he's so well selfish. Meaning. He's like the Bob's most selfish character apart from Mr. Krabs. Neighbor is lazy, dim-witted lacking manners and ignorant. Whoa, 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 whoa. Lazy, dim-witted, lacking manners and ignorant? Those are, those are not necessarily things that make you morally a bad person. It serves to annoy virtually everyone who- 
Okay, someone's not a bad person because they annoy people. He spends enough time with him. He's just a Patrick dickhead. Patrick has an extremely short temper and often disrupts events because he feels he hasn't been paid enough attention. In Valentine's Day, for example, he ruins the carnival because he didn't receive a present. Patrick lacks the confidence of other characters, mainly because he's not as intelligent as them. And this leads to jealous behavior from him whenever someone else succeeds. No danger here! In Big Pink Loser, he remodels his home after Spongebob's to get a chance to live like him. And he's even driven- Aww, that's pretty sad actually. He wants to be Spongebob so bad. ...plastic surgery in No Nose Nose to stop being the only one who doesn't have a nose. Patrick's a follower. He has a temper and he jumps onto other people's schemes to- Patrick is a little brother, straight up. Because all siblings want to be like their older siblings. They always copy what their older siblings do. I would know I have a younger sibling. So Patrick straight up has younger brother energy for SpongeBob. But he never quite they may knows actually be related. stop, so usually takes things way too far. He also has a cruel mean streak, which can be targeted at anyone. Take a bath, flea bag. In Pet Sitter Pat, he nearly killed <laughs> innocent Gary with a flamethrower. That said, the starfish <laughs> does possess loyalty to his friends and usually comes around in the end. If compassion is something that you're looking for, then Patrick is probably not the one that you'll get it from. But for unending loyalty to the point of stupidity, then he's your guy. Putting up with Spongebob and Patrick would be testing for the best of us. So it's unfortunate for poor Squidward Tentacles that Squidward Tentacles is like the average adult. He got stuck living Straight next up. to him. Could it be? Spongebob is gone for the evening. In fact, his Easter Island head home wasn't always next to the famous pineapple. He used to have a nice garden out front until the fruit fell from the surface and was immediately inhabited by the annoying sponge. It probably couldn't have happened to a more deserving person though. Squidward is self-obsessed and thinks he's better than everyone else. He hates his job at the Krusty Krab and has at least 492 self-portraits throughout his house. He's narcissistic, <laughs> sarcastic, rude, grumpy, and would much prefer spending time alone than in the company of others. Me too, but still Squidward is that gifted kid that gets told how smart and good they are the whole time when they realize, then they realize that they never actually put any effort to learn things in school and the result is they don't actually have the result that they want to. They come out of school a little bit dumber than maybe they wanted to be, but you know, they don't know that. They're still got that in their head that they are the gifted child and they're very smart and very epic and better than everyone. But being gifted means that you don't have to put effort in. If you don't put effort in, you don't learn anything, which means you actually are pretty mediocre at the end of the day and you end up working. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with working in like the Krusty Krab or anything like that, but he's clearly not where he wants to be in life and that's because he didn't put the effort in when it really mattered. I am Bikini Bottom's greatest artiste. He goes to great Any kid that gets to get told that they're Spongebob gifted just doesn't put the effort in. obsessed with his quest for fame even if it means taking credit for something that someone else has done. He took credit for creating the David statue, for example, to impress an art appraiser when it was in fact Spongebob who made the statue. And he's always putting other people's talents down, making fun of others' bubble-blowing abilities or artistic creations. That's the lamest idea I have ever heard! He gets incredibly jealous of other people's success, but he's not very good at anything himself. His clarinet playing is dreadful, and he takes out his own insecurities on everyone else. While he's constantly miserable about his lot in life, the truth is he brings it on himself. He could very easily look for another job or move away from his loud and obnoxious neighbors, but in- Well, he did, but he ended up coming back because he realized that being around himself and a group of himself is fucking horrible. And that being around people that are actually like very different to him is actually a lot better and more fun in life. Maybe that actually gives him the, the mindset to change who he is, but not actually in the canon. Instead, I'm saying actually a lot here. Complain. We will say, however, that when SpongeBob's feelings were hurt by the guy that he delivered the pizza to, Squidward gets angry. stuck up for him. So yeah, let's go, Squidward. I, like I said, like I said, Squidward does have a teeny tiny bit of compassion. Moving on to Bubble Bass. 
best known oh, he's for lying ass. about SpongeBob What's a dickhead this older, guy is. Knowing full well how detrimental it would be to the friendly fry cook. Bubble Bass is This is lazy, just your average dishonest, totally fast selfish, food and consumer. Cowardly. Running this is like the least gross and disgusting <laughs> crusty crab consumer. Away with his fins caught between his legs when finally called out on his dishonesty. Next, we have Man Ray and the Dirty Bubble. Although neither of I mean, these they, characters- That is hilarious how the actual super villains of the show are like slightly on the bad side. Not really that much on the bad side, just a little never bit. really accomplish anything, they're worth noting for the simple fact that they pride themselves as villains and commit all sorts of crimes, including bank robbery. But really, both of these characters are pretty much goofballs who really suck at crime. Next up, we have King Neptune. Yeah. Whoa! Interesting, a monarch being one of the most evil, though that is based and very true and relates to real life very, very the closely. King and god of the sea, but this dude- But let's be honest, you can't be a king and not be evil. has a serious power trip going on. You're going to be a god and like it! Most notably, he tried to kill Mr. Krabs, who was falsely accused of stealing his crown. Now, although Mr. Krabs- Honestly, killing Mr. Krabs would probably be a morally good thing to do. Krabs is guilty of a lot. He was innocent- I stole your crown, sign UG Krabs! Well, the evidence is clear, in guys. In his case. And you would think that a king might be better at delivering justice fairly. He also repeatedly burned Patrick in the Neptune spatula episode, and he also locks his own son, Triton, in a cage when he realizes he doesn't want to be a god like his dad. That said, he's not all bad, and reveals himself to have a softer side after everything is said and done. Now, we can't talk about evil Spongebob characters without mentioning the Flying Dutchman. He's just sad that he's dead, that's all. I am the Flying Dutchman! After all, he's kind of the demon of the sea. He's been known to steal people's souls for fun, and of course, his threats to banish people to Davy Jones' locker. But as sadistic as he may seem, it's worth mentioning that he does seem to have another side. He's actually known to have a strong sense of justice and even rewards those for good deeds in certain situations. He's like the Santa Claus of the sea or the Krampus. He's also shown to keep his promises. For example, he granted three wishes to Spongebob and the gang in exchange for uh, a sock. And I'll give you What a deal, wishes. guys. To be what honest, a scam. we think that the Dutchman is lonely and bored. And underneath his crusty, seemingly evil exterior is a guy who just wants a friend. Maybe. Next up is Squilliam, someone so annoying and pretentious. <laughs> uh, see, this is why we need SpongeBob we communism. We start to feel bad for Squidward. Squilliam is mean, arrogant, selfish, and takes legitimate pleasure in watching the failures. God, of Squilliam others, is such a Tory. Especially Squidward's. Just succeeding in everything you failed in. He's, he's such an who ass. He's better because of his wealth and status, and although he may not be responsible for the most destruction, he's undoubtedly an awful person. Or a, you know, squid. Honestly, Squilliam and anyone else past him on the list at this point probably deserves to be sent to Davy Jones Locker. Got him. As we get to the edge. All right, if Plankton is ranked as more evil than Mr. Krabs, I'm gonna blow a gasket. There's no way. Mr. Krabs is easily the most evil person on the show, and it's not it's even evil. close. We arrive at Eugene H. Krabs. <laughs> Money, ah! money, money is all he wants, and as the root of all evil, it leads him to act in selfish and dastardly ways. Sure, he's Krabs a loving father to Krabs doesn't have a single Pork. redeemable thing about him apart from the fact that he has a child. Oh, cares that's about just, SpongeBob that's, and no, that's so to dumb. an extent. But if they get in the way of him earning that cash, then there's only one choice he's going to make. He'll do almost anything to satisfy his greed and sees all of his customers as walking dollar signs. You know what they say, money talks. In the episode, this dude doesn't do a single off, redeemable factor. The session becomes clear as he loses both of his arms and severely injures his head as he's trying to retrieve a dime from the sink. He's forced SpongeBob to serve contaminated burger patties because he hates wasting product, and he's even defiled graves. Look at them! He has robbed graves. He has tried to c cover up a murder that he did. 
Mr. Krabs routinely abuses his employees and scolds them. He breaks every single worker's right law there over is. Anything that would cost him even a few. He pennies. should be number one. one. He's shown abusing most evil jellyfish so that he can mass produce. He made a factory dedicated to animal cruelty. This isn't what it looks like, SpongeBob. Let's also not gloss over the fact that he tried to dispose of the health inspector's body after he thought that he killed him. We gotta get rid of this body before anyone sees it. On top of everything, Mr. Krabs has sold his soul multiple times to multiple spirits. Yeah, yeah, my immortal soul. I've heard that speech before. Mr. Krabs <laughs> is the type of person who would sell out anyone. And there's only one character we can think of who's more evil. Yes, of course. No! Of course, it's no, it's he's not. No, Plankton is not more evil than Mr. Krabs. Plankton has reasons to be frustrated and upset with the world. Mr. Krabs is fucking rich and he does everything that he can to get more rich, up to and including every single law that you can possibly think of he has Sheldon broken. Sheldon J. Plankton, Bikini Bottoms, Ultimate Villain. He runs the Chum Bucket, a wildly unsuccessful burger joint, along with his wife, a super- Plankton is only 1% evil. ...computer named Karen. Typical day of failure, I see, huh, darling? All of his- He comes home and he gets told how much of a failure, a failure he is. I would be pissed his as well. His are in the aim of retrieving Mr. Krabs' secret Krabby Patty formula. Stealing from Mr. Krabs is good. You should steal from Mr. Krabs. They should tax Mr. A Krabs more. that's the true villain of SpongeBob is unchecked capitalism. Like him being arrested at least five times. He's always deceitful, trying to convince SpongeBob and the others that he can be trusted, only to use their goodwill to try and steal from the Krusty Krab. Yeah. This is like saying the people that steal a little bit, I uh, try a little bit from the mafia are the bad guys because they're stealing, but uh, the mafia are the ones doing the killing. Baby, this is it. In the first movie, he enslaved all of the residents of Bikini Bottom. Oh, right, yeah. Ooh, slavery. Right. I did forget about that. That That is a bit of a stain on the old record, I will admit. Slavery, probably not that good. And made them worship him. And this megalomaniacal behavior is always at the root of everything that he does. <laughs> Oh, yeah, he, yeah, the whole town forced into slavery. Yeah, you know what? Actually, he's, pr that is, that's very evil. Slavery, the most evil. Yeah, never mind. Pa Pl Plankton is the most evil. If he didn't do the slavery, then Mr. Krabs is worst. Anyway, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you do it. I stream every day on YouTube at 4 p.m. UK time. Go and do it now.